Hot Chocolate Cereals. Helpful for life. For the next method, we'll call those the baking soda roasted potatoes. Now, you may not want to use that as your name. It's not the best marketing term. So you can think of some other way to call them crispy and delicious. Now, we personally learned about this recipe maybe about a year or so ago from a website called Serious Eats. They do some really good stuff there. Check out the link on your screen to see the exact recipe and even a video showing you each individual step. Now, this method also takes a little bit of time, but it leads to a really good result. It does a really nice job of balancing the creaminess of the inside with a lovely crispy crunchiness on the outside. And it does this using a little bit of food science. It's kind of cool, actually. For this one, you're going to want to cut up some russet or Yukon gold potatoes, and you want to cut them into chunks, I would say smaller than a ping pong ball, just to give you a reference. Now, if you want a little more of that creaminess, then maybe you want them a little bigger. If you prefer a little more of the crispiness and less creaminess, then cut them a little smaller. It's up to you. Oh, and if you peel the potatoes, they'll get a little bit more crispy, but we like potato peels and we're kind of lazy about that kind of thing. So we leave ours on and they always taste amazing. So you've got your potatoes all cut up. And actually, while you're doing that, bring a large pot of water to boil. And once it's boiling, add in a couple tablespoons of salt and half a teaspoon of baking soda. You'll stir that around and then you'll dump in your cut up potatoes. The baking soda actually lowers the pH of the water a little bit, which leads to the potatoes getting roughed up as they're cooking. This roughing up leads to more surface area on the outside, which leads to extra crispiness and extra crunchiness. That is the magic of this technique. So once the potatoes are in with the water and the salt and the baking soda, bring that up to a boil again and then reduce it to a simmer for about 10 minutes, 10 minutes on the simmering step. You'll know the potatoes are ready when a knife can easily be inserted into the potatoes. While those potatoes are simmering, however, you're gonna be making an infused oil. You go you, you're just so fancy. To do that, you'll simply put a small saucepan on the stove on medium heat, dump in about five tablespoons of olive oil, add in say three cloves of minced garlic, uh, maybe a handful of rosemary and some cracked black pepper. And of course you can change these up as you see fit. Then while you're constantly stirring, just have that over the medium heat for about three minutes, the garlic will just start to get golden. Once you get that step, you will take that saucepan, you'll dump it through a mesh strainer into a large bowl. Don't throw away those delicious bits, you're gonna use those later. But back to the potatoes. So after they've simmered for that 10 minutes, you're going to want to drain those potatoes and then put them right back into that pot and let it sit for about a minute. This will help evaporate some of that excess moisture. After it's been roughly a minute or so, dump those potatoes into that large bowl with the infused oil. And then you're gonna take that bowl and you're gonna give it a good tossing. Now be rough when you're tossing because that's how the potatoes like it. And by that, I mean the extra roughness there helps give even more surface area to the outside of the potato, which leads to, you guessed it, more crispiness, more crunchiness, more deliciousness. Finally, you're gonna dump those rough potatoes onto a foil lined sheet pan. It doesn't matter how hard you dump them, they, they take it well. Then throw that pan in the oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes. Don't touch them though. The key to crispiness a lot of times is to not touch the item while it's cooking. Let it sit there and develop that crust. But once that 20 minutes is up, you go in there, open up that oven and flip those bad boys over so the other side can get crispy too. A pro tip for you, when you're doing this, use a fish spatula. It'll help you get all the way underneath all that crispy goodness and you won't lose a bit. After another 20 minutes, so 40 minutes in the oven so far, you'll want to flip them one last time to cook for another 15, 20 minutes or so. So that means your total cook time in the oven is somewhere between 50 minutes and an hour. Now again, just like with anything you're making crispy, you cook it to your desired doneness, which could be more or less. And the last step you're gonna do after you take those out of the oven is you're gonna take those delicious bits that you saved in your mesh strainer and you're gonna plop them right onto your potatoes and mix it all around. And then you're gonna take a bite of that delicious amazingness. You're gonna slowly melt into potato bliss, ascend to the potato gods. 
And then you're gonna call me and you're gonna say, wow, you're so great. Thank you for sharing that with me. And then you're gonna tell all of your friends to buy Kickstart Your Kitchen. Anyways, <laughs> after you taste it, make sure you add any extra salt and pepper that it may need. And for bonus points, you can even toss in some chopped up parsley or some kind of green herb to make it look better and get a little extra flavor. Et voila, delicious crispy potatoes.